worms. So remember we still have round worms and we have segmented worms that we still need to get through. Now the round worms are really weird. If you thought the flat worms were weird and give you the creeps, well these will give you the creeps even more. Um, there are a lot more parasitic worms that are affect humans in this category. So always coming back to this um, slide just like we always do, we can see even just in a short amount of time, we've gotten through Periphera, Nidaria, and Platyamenthes, and now we're on Nematoda. Nematoda are the round worms. So these are the classes that you're responsible for knowing in Nematoda. So again, domain Eukarya, Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Nematoda, and then we have class Cessernenta, and then Adenophoria. Fun Latin word.
Okay, so here's just some examples. They are pretty small. Um, this one's probably a parasite. It's got its head into something. And then this one, it shows an egg next to it, probably like in a leaf pile. Maybe this is some wood chips or something like that. Um, but they look a lot different than from the flatworms. For one, they're round, which is why they're called round worms. There are no segments, like repeating segments like you've seen in earthworms. They're pretty smooth, basically. Now, there are lots of parasites that we might be familiar with. Um, heartworms and dogs is a big one. So they, they get to reproduce so much that these are one of the ones that will harm the host because they just accumulate to such a degree. So obviously, this heart is not able to beat if it's completely filled with worms. So they are not quite as concerned with saving the host as some other species might be. Um, heartworm and dogs, once they get heartworm, it's very, very hard to get rid of it. So that's why there's heartworm preventative medicines um, that you should give your dog. I think there's a shot um, that helps to prevent this from happening because once they get the heartworms, you can't really get them out. Teacher, please pardon the interruption. At this time, can we get all deck of members to the gym? All deck members, thank you. So do they eat it, or do they just like live in it? It's in a, it, so it's like the other life cycles where it's something that they eat and ingest. Um, maybe it was contaminated food that was No, I mean like once like the worms are like in the heart, like do they eat the heart, or do they just like live in the They heart? absorb the nutrients. They might eat some. There are some parasites that eat some, but just like the flatworms, they absorb a lot across the body. This one is a creepy one. Um, so in this one, it's kind of like the um, zombie ant we talked about yesterday, but these are more, the worm will completely take over the insect and fill almost the entire body cavity. And then the next life cycle, or the next part of the life cycle of the worm is in water. So it will make the insect go to water, and then once it detects water, it erupts out. So this was all inside this grasshopper, and it's amazing how much comes out because it has like entirely filled the poor insect. And on that note, let's watch a video about it. Yeah. I have my sound off. to shelter um, parasites in the world. Not and they just are worms. Very disturbing. So it's going to show other Heart parasites worms. too. Animals. Number five. Lamprey. Lampreys are fish with circular mouth containing several lines of sharp teeth they use to attach to other fish, making it almost impossible we'll for the poor victim later. to rid themselves of it. There are two types of lamprey, the blood suckers and the ones that eat the flesh of its victim while it is still alive. The blood suckers have very thin teeth they use to reach blood vessels of their host. Through glands that excrete anticoagulant, they keep the blood in flux until they satiate their hunger. The flesh-eating lampreys have a mechanism of three mobile teeth and a tongue structure they use to chew away pieces of their victim. The parasite can remain stuck to its host for days. While the blood sucker lampreys can give the host a break to recover, the flesh eating ones are very aggressive and in many cases cause the death of its host. Number four, the tongue eating louse. Oh, cool. the scientific name Simotia exigua, the tongue eating louse is another parasite of fish. It is a crustacean which destroys and replaces the tongue of its victims. In the larval stage, the little parasite swims inside the gill of unsuspecting fish where they develop. When they mature, they migrate to the base of the fish's tongue. There, it starts to feed from blood, causing the tongue to atrophy and fall. At this point, the louse exerts a strong grasp on the oral cavity, becoming, in effect, the new tongue of the fish. This exchange does not kill the victim, which is still able to survive with the parasite, feeding and reproducing, but not in the same way it would without it. There are cases of people who found this little invader in fish purchased at markets and even in tuna cans. Number three. 
Cordyceps fungi. These are fungi that parasite insects with a scary effect. Very commonly in tropical forests in Asia and South America, when spores of the fungi get in contact with insects, it invades its body and brain. The fungi begins to control the host's behavior, forcing it to take actions that it would not do otherwise. Ground ants, for example, are induced to climb to the top of trees in search of the ideal place for the cordyceps to develop. When they reach the adequate location, the ant buys a leaf or branch and dies in just a few hours. Shortly after, the fungus starts to develop and emerge from the carcass, where it will eventually fructify. The new spores will disperse in the wind, starting a new deadly cycle. Number 2. Nematomorpha worms. It's not only fungi that can transform its hosts into zombies. The Nematomorpha worms, also known as horsehair or Gordian worms, are thin, similar to strands of horse mane. These parasites infest arthropods, such as insects and spiders. The host is infected when ingesting water or consuming other animals with a worm. Inside the host, the worm grows significantly, going from a fraction of an inch to more than six feet in some In the end, it fills most of the body cavities of the host. With such invasion, the arthropod becomes weak, but doesn't die because its vital organs are preserved. The nematormopha reproduces in water, which can be a problem when they parasite terrestrial animals. To solve this problem, the worm excretes certain proteins, which induces the host to search for a body of water and draw in it. Once in the water, the nematormopha exits the carcass of its host, completing its life cycle. Two rare cases of humans contaminated with the worm were recorded in Japan in 2012 a one-year-old infant, and an 80-years-old man. Number 1. Leucochloridium paradoxum. Leucochloridium paradoxum is a worm, and it parasites oh, birds. Cool However, it spends its larval stage in snails. When snails consume excrement of infected birds, they will also ingest eggs of the parasite. Inside the snail, it develops and migrates to its eye stalks. And this is when things start to get really strange. In order to return to its avian host, the Leucochloridium paradoxum controls the snail, forcing it to expose itself at the top of the vegetation in search of light. They also pulsate inside its eyes, causing it to appear like the grubs the birds most like to eat. The birds are attracted and eat the eyes of the poor snail, taking the parasite back to its home sweet home.
have a mouth and they have an anus. So it's one long tube that travels through. So this is more advanced than we were seeing in the flatworms. The flatworms didn't have one opening for eating and one opening for waste, but this one does. So definitely a step up the evolutionary scale. They also have separate male and female. This is something we haven't seen before either. This ability to have separate male and female is something we call dioecious. Dioecious and dioecious too mean that there are separate male and female. So obviously many of the more complex animals that we know about, um, reptiles, amphibians, and all those, they're dioecious as well. They have separate male and female. Um, hermaphroditic was what we saw previously where sponges, jellyfish, and corals could have both or they could be either. we will see hermaphroditic animals in the future still. So like earthworms, for instance, are hermaphroditic. Um, so it doesn't go away completely. It's just for whatever reason, nematodes developed different sexes.